Hey folks, welcome back to Military Forces Unleashed. Today we're strapping in and throttling up to dive into one of the most legendary feats of aviation engineering, the SR-71 Blackbird. Now, imagine a plane so fast that even missiles couldn't catch it. Yep, that's the beast we're talking about today. In this episode, we'll uncover how the Blackbird revolutionized reconnaissance, broke speed records, and left adversaries staring at empty skies. So buckle up, grab your oxygen mask, and let's take off into the insane world of this Mach 3 Plus Wonder aircraft. This is going to be a wild ride, one that no radar could lock onto. All right, let's rewind to the late 1950s. The Cold War was heating up and spying from the sky was the name of the game. The U-2 spy plane was already giving the CIA some juicy intel, but there was a problem. It flew so high and slow that it might as well have had a target painted on its fuselage. Enter the Soviet missiles, and suddenly, the U-2 wasn't looking so invincible anymore. So, the U.S. needed something faster, something untouchable. Enter Clarence Kelly Johnson and his team at Lockheed Skunk Works. These guys were basically the mad scientists of aviation. And their task? Build an aircraft that could outrun anything the Soviets could throw at it. Thus, the SR-71 was born out of sheer necessity. A plane that wasn't just a step ahead, but a full light year ahead of its time. The Blackbird's design was conceived under the codename Archangel, and it wasn't just about speed. This bird needed to be stealthy, durable, and able to handle the kind of heat that would fry most jets. Imagine trying to create something that defied not only enemy radars, but also the laws of physics. Now, let's get into the meat of it. The SR-71's design was unlike anything else in the sky. Its sleek, needle-like shape wasn't just for show, it was designed to pierce through the air at over three times the speed of sound. But here's the kicker. At Mach 3 Plus, the friction from the air heated the aircraft's skin to over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt aluminum. So what did Lockheed do? They built the plane using titanium, a material that was hard to work with and even harder to source, considering most of it came from the Soviet Union. Oh, the irony. And those engines, Pratt & Whitney J-58 turbojets. These weren't just engines, they were part-time rocket boosters. The SR-71 was so fast that at cruising speed, the air entering the engines was already supersonic. Engineers had to design a whole new system just to manage airflow and prevent the engines from choking. Ever heard of an inlet spike? Yeah, that's the thing that adjusted automatically to keep everything running smoothly at mock speeds. The Blackbird's skin was coated in a special radar-absorbing paint that not only reduced its radar signature, but also helped dissipate heat. And let's not forget about those chine lines, the sharp edges along its fuselage that gave it that unique alien spaceship vibe. Those weren't just for looks, they contributed to lift and stability. Here's a fun fact. The SR-71 wasn't armed with a single weapon. That's right, not one missile, not one bullet. Its primary defense, speed. If a missile was launched at the Blackbird, the pilots had one simple response. Just go faster. And it worked. Not a single SR-71 was ever shot down in combat. This speed advantage wasn't just about outrunning missiles. It was about staying untouchable. The Blackbird's Mach 3 Plus capabilities meant it could cross hostile territory, gather critical intel, and exit before enemy defenses could even react. Its titanium skin could withstand the immense heat generated by friction at such speeds, literally making it a blazing blur in the skies. The Blackbird's main mission was reconnaissance. With advanced cameras and sensors, it could map entire regions in stunning detail, all while cruising at 85,000 feet. To put that in perspective, commercial airliners fly at around 35,000 feet. The SR-71 was nearly in space, 
Pilots had to wear specially designed spacesuits to survive in the extreme conditions, where the outside temperature could plunge to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit while the aircraft's surface reached hundreds of degrees. Imagine flying so fast and so high that you could see the curvature of the Earth, the deep blackness of space above, and the bright blue of our atmosphere below. And let's not forget the thrill of knowing you were untouchable, a literal ghost in the sky. During its operational life, the SR-71 flew missions over hotspots like Vietnam, the Middle East, and even the Arctic, gathering intel that shaped U.S. military strategy. These missions weren't just about snapping photos, they were strategic moves to maintain air superiority. The aircraft's presence alone was enough to keep adversaries on edge. It wasn't just spying, it was a psychological game. Knowing the U.S. had an aircraft that could outrun and outclimb anything was a statement of dominance, and the Blackbird delivered, capturing intelligence that satellites of the time simply couldn't match, whether it was real-time updates or sheer image quality. All right, let's get real. The SR-71 was a marvel, but it wasn't without its flaws. First off, this thing was expensive, both to build and to operate. Each flight hour required over 100 hours of maintenance. That's like having a Ferrari that needs a full engine rebuild after every trip to the grocery store. The maintenance costs alone made it a tough sell to budget-conscious politicians and military brass. The Blackbird's groundbreaking technology came at a steep price, and that's not even factoring in the specialized training needed for pilots and ground crews. Then there's the issue of fuel. The Blackbird leaked fuel on the ground because its titanium skin expanded at high temperatures, sealing the tanks only when it reached cruising speed. So it had to refuel mid-air shortly after takeoff. Efficient? Not really. Cool? Absolutely. Watching a KC-135 tanker refuel the SR-71 mid-flight was like watching a Formula One pit stop in the sky but this quirk also meant the Blackbird's missions required precise planning and coordination, adding another layer of complexity to its operations. And let's not forget the politics. By the late 80s, satellite technology was catching up, and the Pentagon questioned whether the SR-71's eye-watering costs were still justified. Add in some good old inter-service rivalry, with the Air Force and intelligence community butting heads over priorities, and you've got a recipe for the program's eventual retirement in 1998. But here's the thing. Even in retirement, the Blackbird's legacy looms large. It's a symbol of an era when innovation and risk-taking were the order of the day, a time when pushing the envelope wasn't just encouraged, it was mandatory. So what's the takeaway here? The SR-71 Blackbird wasn't just an aircraft, it was a statement. It screamed innovation, pushing the boundaries of what was possible in aviation. But it also highlighted the challenges of maintaining cutting-edge technology in a world that's always evolving. The Blackbird was a double-edged sword, a game-changer in reconnaissance, but also a logistical and financial headache. It proved that speed and altitude could redefine air power but it also showed the limits of what technology can achieve without a sustainable support system. At its core, the Blackbird was a product of its time, a time when speed and altitude were king. It's a reminder of what humanity can achieve when faced with a seemingly impossible challenge. But it's also a cautionary tale about the cost of staying ahead in the arms race. The SR-71 story is as much about its incredible successes as it is about the lessons learned from its limitations. It's a testament to human ingenuity, a symbol of Cold War innovation, and a legend that still captures the imagination of aviation enthusiasts and military historians alike. If this deep dive into the skies got your adrenaline pumping, don't forget to hit that like button. Got a favorite aircraft or military system you want us to cover next? Drop it in the comments below. And hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Join the Military Forces Unleashed crew and stay tuned for more epic stories from the world of military aviation. Let's keep this conversation going and explore more about the machines that shaped history. Thanks for flying with us today. 
Your support keeps this channel soaring to new heights. Until next time, keep your eyes on the skies and your feet on the ground. See you in the next mission.